Okay. Oh. Ready? Yeah. How's my mic volume? It's good. Okay. Well, we're live. So, well, here we are live on YouTube. Ryan, how you doing this morning? Great, Nathan. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. I'm <laughs> a little curious to know what the crap we're listening to today. <laughs> yeah, we have no idea. This is a uh, album request from Peter, who is a big supporter of our channel. We appreciate his support throughout the last little while, and we hope he continues to support our future endeavors. Uh, this album, I don't even know if we're pronouncing it correctly, or this artist is Dan Lassac versus Scrubius Pip. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. And the album is called Angles. And this is part one of our full album reaction to this album. Mm-hmm. All I know is that it's hip hop and electronica, according to the Wikipedia genre. So, okay. yeah, which I would assume it won't be boring, if that makes sense. Because most like electronica or hip hop, you're just, I mean, there's a beat and you're like, okay, boom, you know. And it's not really our wheelhouse. What mm-hmm. little I do know about this album, I think it has been divisive with some critics, maybe even fans. I don't know much else about it. I think it is two different people. That's the pictures we see there, two heads there. So it might be two artists that, that do this. Let us know in the comments for part one, kind of what we should know about this duo mm. or this band. So when we do part two, we might be a little bit more informed about who they are. And people might ask, well, why didn't you just Wikipedia it? Well, we did a little bit, but we don't, want, we don't like to go into bias like i even hate reading reviews sometimes because i don't want to be like because i don't know I, there's bands that i enjoy and albums that i enjoy that i know people don't enjoy if that makes sense so i don't want to be biased by people that i don't know and from a band i don't know i i kind of want to go in blind but it's a little bit i know yeah yeah okay yeah i it, noticed it, that it, uh these guys the one of the songs is on a like a collaboration album um oh shoot I oh know the name of the band in my head when i when you're talking i try to f- keep it there and i couldn't do it uh fat boy slim fat boy slim oh okay well interesting if they collaborated i, I like some fat boy slim back in the day i enjoyed that stuff yeah, yeah. okay fair enough yeah this is coming out in 2008 so it's already 14 years old if you can believe it you know 2008 seems like new music to me and it, it is but it's still 14 years ago yeah, <laughs> it's no, so weird how uh, it time is weird all right, so the first song, Nathan, is called The Beat That My Heart Skipped. It was actually the second single from the album. All right. Okay. Let's go. Okay, no right for this one. I ain't going to take it no more. I ain't going to take it no more. I ain't going to stand idly by while the bridal reply of a marriage of styles is, yeah, but what's their demographic? I ain't going to take it no more. I ain't going to take it no more. Hmm. I ain't going to stand idly by with a tight and a sigh while inside we all cry out for something new. I ain't gonna take it no more. I ain't gonna take it no more. Soulless music, artless lyrics, goalless movements, heartless gimmicks, controlled and clueless, careers last in a minute. If this is the big life, well, I ain't looking to live it. We ain't pushing the boundaries, we're blowing them up. We ain't trying to expand the scene, we want the scene to erupt. So make some room on the floor and somebody bolt the doors, cause tonight, we ain't seeking applause. Tonight, well, gee. Is that, is that them, I wonder? Oh. Man. 
Now that I've heard it, this with a kind of regret, no disrespect, but we left a lot of people upset. We had wasn't really what we come to expect. Beat them a heart since we first met. Now that I've heard it, this with a kind of regret, no disrespect, but we left a lot of people upset. What we had wasn't really what we come to expect. Oh good god damn and other such phrases. Haven't heard a beat like this in ages. To miss such a beat would have been outrageous when your heart's gets to be as ruthless and aimless. something happen it's still playing but that's weird okay oh we got lyrics here i was i felt bad for you because uh nathan you do the record on your end so if itunes doesn't have lyrics available you don't get to look at them so i actually quickly googled the lyrics and was able mm -hmm. to read along yeah uh which makes it easier for me especially with a song like this because he's uh is that I mean I hate to sound stupid, but is that that's rap, right? Is that rap or is it, it just fast okay, talk singing? So, I don't I never know well, the difference. That's what I wanted to say. It started out as uh like what's that slam poetry. Okay. Right. That's the way it's it sounded. He was like sounded like he was doing slam poetry kind of like at the beginning of the song. Um but then okay, then the beat comes down. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's a good beat. I don't know what it was, but I I found it hard to listen to him singing or like do, like rapping. It just seemed like he was a very good lyricist. I, I really mm. enjoyed the lyrics. Um, I really thought they were clever. Um, but I was distracted by by him trying like like rapping until at the end when he started to kind of do it more angry rap. And then it was kind of like, oh yeah, this fits better. This fits the song a little better. It just but it sounded strange to me that it started with kind of slam poetry and then with a beat. Right. Yeah. That's, that's my thoughts. Oh, uh, no, very <clears throat> good thoughts, Nathan. Oh, I, I agree. I agree with you uh, in many ways. In fact, I would say I didn't, that's not, I didn't like it. Again, I'm pretty certain we're not going to be bored by the album. Mm -hmm. I don't think it, that wasn't boring to listen to. Mm -hmm. It didn't blow my socks off, but yes, the highlight was the last minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When he went into that angry, voice so to speak or when he went mm -hmm. up that like frantic angry sounding at the end it definitely yeah. sounded better and it so it ended on a high note so i give it like a c plus at the beginning like okay boom, boom. beat that my heart's gonna you know it's just a tap your foot type listening song but when he got kind of that angry voice at the end i really enjoyed that that was actually the highlight of the song mm -hmm. um yeah and it, like you said he's a good lyric writer i would also say 
I want to say this too, um, that to sing or to talk that fast is very hard. Like mm -hmm. it's hard to, so, because it's not singing. You know, we often equate that if somebody can sing, that means somebody that can rap or whatever, slam poetry or, or talk, sing fast, that that's easy. Yeah. It's actually a lot harder than you, th I would, well, it's hard for me and maybe I'm alone in this, but I would find it very difficult to, but, 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 but like I can't even talk normal right now on this freaking reaction channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm the same. But way. cause I, I would find that you really have to enunciate your words and get them out. And that's a skill in itself or else mm -hmm. you're just going to mumble, which I believe is a form of rap. Now mumble rap. I've never heard of one mumble rap song, but I've heard that's actually a genre and I don't want to hear it. So yeah. don't even at me with any suggestions. I okay. Can't, I can't believe it's called mumble rap. Okay. It's called mumble rap. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, wait, before you play the next one, mm -hmm. um, this one's called development. Mm -hmm. And that's all I know. It's not a single. It's just called development. Second song. Okay. okay. And there's lyrics now. Great. Good for you. I mean, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's good for you. I like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Love that acoustic guitar sound. Possession is no attempt, so we possess my events to filter the rhyme sent from deep down inside, hence the precision and timing, essential to rhyming. If you wish to pierce the cerebral line, you see, image is nothing, imagination is everything. Is there anything you wear that's more important than what you think? I think not, as I bum pace up, cruise to Herbie Hancock, I'm fucking rock out with snot. You wanna look for me, I'll be in jewelry shops. I ain't buying my shirts and buying my damn pants and socks. Bitch, what? This shit's inside of me. I ain't riding the beat, it's the beat that is riding me. Underground, intelligent hip hop, development, progression, it's our intent, lady, gentlemen. Underground, intelligent hip hop, development, progression, it's our intent. Underground, intelligent hip hop, development, progression, it's our intent, lady, gentlemen. Underground, intelligent hip hop, development, progression, it's our intent. I just drink a lot And maybe I'm a genius Or maybe I just think a lot My intellectual hey, respect yo, bit, to You know that second verse Was always but, straight no, garbage What are you talking about man? It's not that I bad I know what it's I'm right. talking about Give these fuckers something well, What am I new. supposed to do? What? Come on man Alright man Alright how about this? I remember hearing most deaf run the alphabet I just sat there in silence as a sign of respect I knew what I had to do and that's what happened next I run the periodic table to stay one step ahead See in the periodic table, hydrogen's number one Cause hydrogen is what puts the shine in the sun Through nuclear fusion And when it's done, it leaves element number two Helium Helium's the second lightest gas that there is So we use it in balloons we give to little kids <laughs> Then there's lithium, often used to treat metal problems Beryllium don't conduct electric currents to stop some Boron can be used to make things harden And that smoke coming out of your exhaust? Carbon Carbon's arguably the most important element And nitrogen's in the air at almost 80% The rest of the air is mainly oxygen And fluorine is the lightest of the halogens Okay, that's enough teaching I ain't trying to bore ya trying to be a positive role model for you Cause in my town, I'm blessed with many role models So many that sometimes the mind just bolts See, KRS is my teacher, slick bricks my ruler Chuck D's my preach, I'm just a preschooler I still got growing to do though, I ain't trying to fool you But compared to all the other kids in my class, I'm much taller I'm much taller
I always wonder this or, about uh, hip hop and rap and stuff. Is to what extent is are the lyrics made up on the spot? And mm-hmm. how much of that is like pre-planned, where you like figure out the lyrics, because um, it becomes a, com- a completely different topic or different discussion when it's being invented on the fly. You know what I mean? Like, and I've seen some people do it amazingly well, just coming up with lyrics out of nowhere, and they fit. And then, like, you've probably seen some of these like hip hop battles where they have like uh, one rapper versus another one, and they're just coming up with rhymes, and they just kind of outdo each other. Um, I wonder if that's if that happens with this kind of with his music here. Uh, I think that's Dan's Dan Lasak, or maybe it's Pip. I don't know which one is who. I don't yeah, know. let us know the comments. Well, it says songwriters according to online songwriters: Alan Shortus, David Meads, and Ross Lawson. So I, I think those are maybe those aren't the real names of. Um, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I'm sure there's we could Wikipedia this crap. <laughs> I don't mean the I don't mean the crap crappy. I mean like just um so David Meads began writing poetry in two thousand five. Okay. So he adopted the pseudonym Scoobius Pip mm. from Edward Lear's poem, The Scoobius Pip. Okay. Uh so it says here Dan Lassac and then Scoobius Pip worked as soul artist before forming the duo. So Dan Lassac is a laptop musician. DJ and promoter, and Scoobius Pip is a spoken word artist. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So don't add us in the comments. Now we know. Scoob- Scoobius must be doing the, the vocals. St- Scoobius, sorry. Scoobius. Scrooby Doo. <laughs> uh, Scoobius Pip is the spoken word guy. Okay. And then <clears throat> Down the Sack is the laptop uh, musician guy. Okay, cool. There and he, he kind of like cut in there right before the, the, the lyrics changed to the elements when he says, you know, give him something new. Right. All right. What am I supposed to do? What? Oh, come on. How, how about this? And then he goes into that, like the periodic table. And I just thought, yeah, is, is, was that like a, let's make this up right now. Let's go. No. <clears throat> I hear what you're saying. So th- you've, you brought up a few things. So yes, I've seen rap battles. Mm. Uh, of course, the, the famous movie, uh, Eight Mile, was all about that with Eminem. Mm-hmm. And it was a rap battle. And the idea in the movie was is that they would diss each other and on stage and of course the lyrics are written for the film but i would assume a talent like eminem could do it and it's like i guess you could almost say rap is like be a guitarist like if you're said hey or any or drummer or doesn't matter whatever instrument you play hey go out go up on stage and just give us something like a guitarist that's been doing it forever would be able to go in there and just do something yeah. just play and do something off the top of their head and i would assume rap is the same uh use of the brain regarding uh, talent and and ability that they would be able to combine words and ideas that rhyme on the spot because that's exactly what a rap battle is. You're putting them on the spot, saying, "Hey, they just dissed you on whatever." Mm-hmm. Get them back. It's like a roast, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I would think for this song here in particular, when it, especially when it came to the elements, there's no unless he's a genius. There's, I don't think there's any way he would have been able to come up with what these things actually do with hydrogen and mm-hmm. nitrogen and beryllium, like off the top of his head, right. make it rhyme. You know, but the idea may have come from something because he said here, I remember hearing Moss Def rhyming the alphabet. So he's talking about probably his childhood or when he's a teenager or whatever. That Moss Def mm-hmm. did the alphabet. I never saw, but I guess he did an alphabet rhyme. So mm-hmm. he's like, well, let me try it. So I'll try it with something a little bit harder. I'll do it with. So that's all that is, and. Yeah, it's fun. So you talk about some of his um, uh, influences. You listen to Herbie Hancock, which would probably be that would be um, Dan Lasack. Probably listen to Herbie Hancock because Herbie Hancock was a lot of electronic music and stuff like that. And then uh, and then it says you're rocking out to snot. Now I'm about to sneeze. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting over a cold. Okay, so um, snot. It says capital S. It's actually they're a Russian metal band. Oh, yeah. And I on my first channel, I actually reacted to one of their songs. And um, great stuff. It was actually really cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. So this uh, shout out to Snot. They're a Russian metal band. So or Ukraine. I don't even know. Now that I said that, I, I'm so <laughs> such sensitive times now. I don't know which one. I think it's Russian. Anyways. Okay. All right. Let let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. All right. Here we go. Next one. Okay. Oh wait. Pause it. So the next one is called Look for the Woman. Look for the Woman. And it's actually the third song on the album and third single they released from the album. Okay, okay. go ahead. I don't have yeah. lyrics for this one. No, you don't. It's too bad. Okay. There's a way over me today. 
something I have to say Love you too much to leave Don't like you enough to stay My head's in a mess and I'm stressed But I guess it's a test in the quest for happiness And the rest of that mess are our best Just acquiesce even though I've grown tired of you Sounds spiteful, I just try to be insightful When I write all my emotions in the night All the stuff I try to write will just come out And the sad fact is, I'm so tired of you Love, it's a weird thing ain't it There's no way to explain it But I swear as well as pain There should be joy but we sustain the same level of mundane And it's numbing me through I often wonder if I'd miss you And still have the urge to kiss you If an issue was to hit through to this heart that now feels issue And said issue was too big to just ignore out on you. The chances are I'd fall apart. Suffer seizures of the heart as my chest begins to smart. The very second love depart, I want to go back to the start. But then again, maybe I just feel new. Maybe I'd get my life on track and start to focus my attack on all the things my life just lacks and start to claw my passion back instead of living like a hack. Half committed, half relaxed. I'd have nothing to lose. There's a way over. to think and yeah way too much a drink when paper meets the ink overthinking is the chink in my armor that's just what i do and i've always been that way forever questioning each day and every plea that's made that made me when i lay my busy mind will make me pay by finding problems and reasons that might not even be true see we got together so young before our real lives have begun but flowers don't grow up as one each finds its own route to the sun and that's exactly what we've done we've grown up separately too now it's been a problem And these realisations I wish that I could stop them But I've realised that love is all we have in common And deep down you know that's true But then surely that I'm still in love with you Means there's something we can do To get us through and to pursue A brand new point of view on how this gap grew Between me and you So there's a weight over me And I'd hate to have to leave But in fate I don't believe And the state of you and me isn't great as you can see So I'll keep thinking this through there's a weight over me today Something I have to say Love you too much to leave Don't like you enough to stay There's a weight over me today Something I have to say That's a, that was a good song. I think that's the better of the, th the best of the three so far. Yeah, I agree. I'm sorry. I'm looking at something because I'm trying to figure this out. Okay. So, all right. Do you know who Sasha Baron Cohen is? Yes. Okay. Um, he made a character long before like Borat or any of his other like more famous characters that was this character that was sort of this rapper that you know. He, he has a similar like sound to the way he speaks and everything too, and I I wonder if there's a if that's a if there's a connection. Like I wonder if hmm. that character is based. I know who you're talking off about. Of Ali G. Of yeah, Ali G. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm just curious if like there's a connection there because he sounds very very similar. Well, they're both British, right? So that's but, probably part of what you're hearing too. Yeah, but um, it's like he was specifically like a rapper. 
with that accent. And Sasha Baron Cohen has a, a more distinct, like his, his mm-hmm. own normal accent, whatever you want to call it, normal accent. But like, and he uses that more, it sounds like this guy's like style. I don't know. I don't know if one is mimicking the other or they're completely mutually exclusive. But yeah, it just made me well, think about I'll, I'll ask you a question. Okay. Because uh, I'll be able to Google because you, you're recording on your end, so I don't think you can. Yeah. So, yeah, LG came out, believe it or not, a little bit earlier than this. So, 2000, 2004. Okay. So, LG was released as a TV show before this album came out. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So, I think it's just a combination of, yeah, you have a very popular satire character who's playing that hip hop type guy who did, and they're both British. And it's, mm-hmm. it's, so, I think it's, they both have that low, very unique voice. And I hear it too. I do hear the voice. It's very similar sounding. Mm-hmm. Sasha Baron and uh, Scoobius. Yeah. Scrubius have the same sounding voice. Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then there's something like that clever lyric writing, what have you. Like I wouldn't say this. I would say these guys. Um, they're not a satire band. That's not what I mean by that. But they're, no. but they have like you know the whole idea of that development song. Like you're now you're you're rapping about you know the, the periodic table. So they're yeah. they're making a little, like they're more on the clever side. Mm-hmm. I think is what they're going for. And I wonder if we're going to see that right now with the next song, Rappers Battle. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if we'll see some sort of what we talked about. You know. Yeah, you know, battle rap or whatever. What do we? Yeah. Like, so we'll yeah. So we'll see in the lyrics. Hopefully, you have lyrics for this because I assume there's going to be some back and forth in this. All yeah. right. I agree with you on what you said about the the song though. I, I think that was probably the better one so far. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, I, I like the uh, the 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 kind of that build up, the uh, female chorusing in the background. Yeah, it was it was a good song. Yeah. I mean, this is this like I said, I, it's not a boring album. Uh, it's you know it's it's not our wheelhouse like electronica and rap or hip hop isn't in Nathan and Ryan's wheelhouse but but yeah I'm not bored yeah yeah okay rap battle let's see it all right oh, oh no lyrics for you no lyrics. sorry I'm reading them okay I can listen <laughs> okay I can listen. <laughs> Bitch 
in the bitch in the block. Bitch in the bitch in the pier. Kick, kick, kick. Like a wrestler. Bottom, pop, pop. Hey, block. Bitch in the 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 block. Okay. So with that one, I would say I I like the music of that one a lot. I actually really liked the little chorus they had going on in the beat, and yeah. when the the singers come in and kind of. Uh, with that other voice that came in, but I'm <clears throat> this is like going on four songs here where the, his 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 rapping's not my favorite. I, I there's some rap that I love listening to. I really enjoy it, but just just something about his voice when it comes in, it's almost like oh, I would have rather just listened to the music or someone else rapping those lyrics. But something about mm -hmm. his voice. Just that's fun. Like, that's yeah. Sorry, that's <clears throat> fair. I can see it. I understand what you're saying. You don't like British people. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Beatles you don't, can't stand them. <laughs> well, you don't like British rappers. I understand. Um, <laughs> yeah. I I know. I Nathan is always, uh, not always is not the right word, but Nathan is not afraid to tell more of the truth than me. <laughs> and, and I don't mean that in the, like, because I don't want to. We never like to crap on anything, especially when people have asked us to do something they support our channel. But I also think people do want our honest opinion about things. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm with you. I, I don't I don't find his like I'll go back to Eminem. I know he's like one of the greatest rappers ever. We understand that rightfully so. Um, but yeah, when he raps on about it, the way he sounds, it's it's very cool to listen to mm -hmm. Eminem sound. Like he's able to sound cool or mm. i don't know how to make it i don't know you know i'm sure if i rapped so let me be clear if nathan and i rap we'd sound crappy but we don't do it for that reason yeah. <laughs> um yeah but that, but that being said uh yeah i'm i don't know what it is too about his voice i i kind of wish he went back to that first song at the end there that was okay when he kind of got that angry rap sound mm -hmm. uh um, i'm the same way i think he's a good lyric writer though so i know yeah. you're missing out on a lot of the lyrics and there was a part of the song that i enjoyed the so i think he's really good at poetry and bringing up imagery and i think he's just a better lyric writer than he is performing the songs mm -hmm. and that's just the way it goes i look at bob dylan like bob dylan's a horrible singer but he's a great lyric writer right. um it might be watch everyone get mad at me for that now. Whatever. Um, there's there's a there's a line here. It says the skin never forgets a deep abrasion, yet your brain often forgets deep conversations. I, I like that line. Mm, yeah, that is a good line. Yeah. Yeah. That was near the beginning there. Well, uh, this annoys. This goes on to say this annoys me due to the nature of humanity. Want to remember for the good, not just the bad things that happened to me. And that's why I think, yeah, a different rapper. I would have enjoyed that a lot more. It's just. And and I even like like I was kind of like like the music just sounded really catchy like I was mm -hmm. I was starting to get drawn in by that but I had to keep on going yeah but his voice yeah sorry mm -hmm. no that's fine well maybe some of the songs will appeal to you more the next one is called Tommy C Tommy C okay Tommy C in recent years there's been a lot of pop acts singing about being beautiful or someone or something being beautiful. Now, I know this ain't a new thing, but it just feels as if these people don't really know what beauty is, and by banding it around so often, it starts to lose all meaning and worth. You see, beauty and beautiful are powerful words. It's more than just a physical thing. It's more than just a nice pair of tits. Bring the beat in and let me tell them what I think beauty is. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder I was lucky enough to be near So I told the fire Early enough I missed the freckles on the shoulder And the even on the hottest of nights The skin was colder Beauty's in the eye of the beholder I was lucky enough to be near So I told the fire Early enough I missed the freckles on the shoulder And the even on the hottest of nights The skin was cold. Now for me to get my definition of beauty across to you I must request your attention for the immediate future Won't take the longest to put you in a catatonic stupor So I present my case study example 
Tommy Cooper. If you haven't heard of Tommy, I'll do my best to explain. Tommy Cooper was in the entertainment game. Every granddad in Britain could do a Tommy Cooper impression with a selection of gags and movements of facial expressions. His uniform was a suit and a red fez hat. He would combine drugs and magic tricks just like that. He'd drift between the two with the most handy transition. He was two part comedian, one part magician. Mistakes and mess up were a big part of his show. Which were real and which were planned, only he would know. If he messed up or a certain joke bombed, he'd just start laughing at himself as soon the laughs would catch on. See, Tommy gave no regard to class or race. His only goal was to put a smile on every single face. All his life, Tommy lived just to make people laugh. Whether on stage or at home, he'd just be acting dark. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I was lucky enough to be near, and so I told the fire. Early enough, I missed the freckles on the shoulder, and the even on the hottest of nights, the skin was cold down. In the eye of the beholder, I was lucky enough to be near, so I took the fun. Early enough, I missed the freckles on the show, and then even on the hottest of nights, the skin was cold. Whether it appropriate or not, became somehow unconnected because making people laugh was his only objective. But there's one thing in life no man can avoid this thing will leave the hearts of loved ones empty and void. Death will always cause hurt and pain. It can take weeks before a smile's on your face again. Sure, when reminiscing, there can be great happiness, but the immediate time they're searing pain and nothing less. On April 15th, 1984, the London Palladium was the scene of Tommy's show once more. It was a full house, he had the crowd in out of his hand. Everything is usual. Seemed completely unplanned. In what seemed like a finale, Tommy dropped to the floor, causing the room to erupt in laughter and applause. Curtains closed, lights went out, there was no encore. Everybody left their seats and headed for the door. Unbeknownst to them, they had witnessed Tommy Cooper's death. He had given his all until he had nothing left. Now, please note, at the moment this entertainer died, even with a room full of people, not one tear was cried. Much less they rose to their feet and they laughed and clapped. Now, tell me one fucking thing that's more beautiful than that. Sure, I can't think of one. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I was lucky enough to be near, so I told the fun. Lily and I promised the freckles on the shoulder, and the even on the hottest of nights, it was cold out. He's in the eye of the beholder. I was lucky enough to be near, so I told the fun. Lily and I promised the freckles on the shoulder, and the even on the hottest of nights, it was cold out. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Okay, so I, I don't know how much... Did you catch much of the story there? A little bit. Okay. Oh, sorry. That was a really good song. Uh, I'll tell you why. I really like that. Now, I, you made a face. You don't like that song? Or oh, Why? It was my least favorite song so far. Okay, yep. maybe because you weren't reading the lyrics, which is fine. So Tommy Caesar, Tommy Cooper's a real person. Uh, he was a uh, magician comedian, okay. and he died at the age of sixty-three. And what makes his story horrible, uh, like horribly tragic, but also kind of beautiful. What I liked, what he did here, maybe that's why I liked the song. Wasn't the song per se? This is where the lyrics were more important than the music, and I right. think that's why I asked you, did you have the lyrics? Because what uh, what I felt was done very well by by the group here was they were able to tell like a biography on this comedian. Right. And this guy, he what he did was he was two parts comedian, one part magic. And sometimes his shows would bomb or a joke would bomb. And sometimes you'd do mistakes on stage and the, only he would know what was real and what wasn't. So that was part of his shtick was uh, some magic tricks would work, some didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, some jokes landed, some didn't. And he would make the he would make the audience uncomfortable at times, and then he would laugh at his bad jokes, and then the audience would laugh with him. So he had this great ability of being able to uh, perform magic that and jokes, and they wouldn't always go off. It wasn't mm -hmm. a perfect show. So the idea was, how much was it him screwing up for real or playing into his screw ups? Yeah, yeah. And and then he had 
what happened there at the end of his career, he actually had a heart attack. Well, end of his career because it ended his life. He had a heart attack on stage. Oh, no way. So during one of his acts, he's uh, he collapsed and fell backwards against the curtain. And it was the crowd laughed and cheered and clapped. Oh, boy. Because they thought it was part of his act of like, oh, look, he's ah, he's he stumbled in his show and he's pretending he's dead and he was dragged off stage, but he died. Ugh. So the way and what I loved about the, the lyrics right in this, yeah, the song itself is the music it was. And I think that's maybe where you might have come in like uh, unimpressed because I think the lyrics was a really fun story of his like it was a great biography of his life. Mm hmm. And it says here, even with a room full of people, now one. Oh, sorry. Now, please note that at that moment that this entertainer died, even with a room full of people, not one tear was cried. Hmm. Much less they rose to their feet and they laughed and clapped. Now, tell me one thing that's more beautiful than that. Hmm. No, like I'm not. I'm not criticizing the story or the subject or the lyrics right. or any of that stuff. There's just just musically it, it was start, it was starting to like uh, make me uncomfortable almost so uh, it's cool i mean uh, like uh, i'm looking at this from a perspective of this is a professional person who's put their music out there for the world to look at if this was right. like a teenager in one of my like high school classes that had done a project on something i'd be like this is amazing this is top marks but that's not what this is this is a musician putting his music out there and for my own personal tastes i i don't it's not like i don't like rap i don't like rappers that can't sing or play music right and yeah. and it gets under my skin when they attempt it and it just falls flat and and like hearing them do the chorus just make me go uh like it's hard to listen to for me it just is I can't, really I, can't, get through that? I can't change really... that i can't change i can't be like oh yeah okay i'll just turn that part of my brain off that like, mm -hmm. appreciates you know someone who is when someone attempts to be musical and they're not right. i know i know there's a whole bunch of people who are totally fine with that and that's fine like i'm not i'm not going against you I just my brain won't let me go yeah it just goes Ugh. right it's like nails on a chalkboard for me well i'm trying to help you i'm trying to help you give you context so <laughs> i agree with you I, well i agree with you like we've established i think that yeah that song in particular yeah musically it was nothing no. Nothing there. It was almost just a uh, a musical chorus to carry the story. Yeah, it is. It was pushing the narrative. Uh, I just had the luxury again of being able to read the lyrics, and I, I find and I've, I knew about that video. I've seen the video of him passing on stage. I, oh. I actually have seen the video, so okay. I, knew, I already knew about the story. So sure. it was just I found it very well done. If you were to like, hey, if I was given the challenge, I want you to put this guy's life to to a poem, mm -hmm. so that I wouldn't be able to do it. So he was able to he was able to do it. Uh, I thought I thought he did a good job. Again, good lyric writer. Yeah, I'm not saying so I could do it either. By the way, I'm not trying to say. Oh yeah, no, I, no, but I, I can do a better job. I, what, no, I, I want to establish. I want to establish. Okay. I agree with you. The music isn't that great. The singing's not that great. I'm mm -hmm. trying to also just sp not spin it, but I want to focus on too that. Yeah. The story was well done. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, the music was. If you're just to put this in the car, like, hey, honey, listen to the song. You know, on a car ride with your girlfriend or wife or significant other, whatever. I don't think very many people. Would be, oh, that was amazing. That was awesome. You know, you no, know, it's I. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, All right. After I said that, our two viewers on YouTube have dropped off. Yeah. So now we're yeah, down to I, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna get any views on this. <laughs> this yeah, this album was split amongst critics, and I think a lot of people will agree with you. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe the ones that did like it might agree with me, not with me versus you per se but maybe they were focused on the lyrics, on the lyrics. i don't know i didn't read the yeah. yeah okay so the next song is called fixed there's nothing we do could fix this we still got to do part two nathan but let's uh there we go fixed screw this pip uh what's your opinion of uk hip-hop uh, well i you know i don't know if there's that much going on there's some, there's some great stuff don't get me wrong there's some amazing artists but a lot of people are just doing the same thing over and over again it just gets a bit monotonous it messed the beat up and shows what you think, Dan Lassac. Ahaha! 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 Dan Lassac, Scrooby as Pip. Fixing hip hop. As best we can. Hip hop is hard. I think another pop hit be smart. 
Take you back to the start Like how I and rock and use passion and heart Hip hop is art I make another pop hit be smart Take you back to the start Like how I and rock and use passion and heart Now don't get me wrong I ain't dissing Dizzy Russell I'm just using this beat as a single example Was the first big hit of its kind in the pop charts Spawned a lot of shit with profit in mind Not hard Channel use full of Think they should all have Prancing about like they're the next big thing Cause their cousin's got an agent they made Daryl can see These kids getting above their station and saying They're a vessel for which a higher power's conveying My lyrical content is a miracle concept My name is Scroobius Pip I say fuck all that nonsense Their lyrical prognosis is like spiritual osmosis In that everything they say evaporates into both It's a joke I don't I can't even find one quote worth using as a reference or even as a footnote Most of these kids can get their guns out and kill me But how many got the skill to inspire and thrill me? I got a holster, I keep biscuits in it She wears into your brain, leaving big fat blisters in it Who am I better than? I'm better than I used to be I'ma keep on getting better, so you better just get used to me You think that's a cop out? You hear my point truthfully, cause chances are This is how you should be If your only goal's to be as good as Scrooby as Pip Then as soon as you achieve that, your stands will stick If your only goal is always to improve on yourself Then the quest is never over, no matter how big you will Yeah! Hip hop is art I'll make another pop hit, be smart Take it back to the start, like how I and rock him, use passion and heart. Hip hop is art. I make another pop here, be smart. Take it back to the start, like how I and rock him, use passion and heart. Hip hop is art. I make another pop here, be smart. Take it back to the start, like how I and rock him, use passion and heart. Hip hop is art. I make another pop here, be smart. Take it back to the start, like how I and rock him. Okay, well, I I quite enjoyed that one. <laughs> was it a fix for you? <laughs> well, it was um, it was making its point really well, right? There's there's not a lot of UK hip hop. The ones that were out there were all about trying to score a hit and you know make it big, and a few of them were doing it from the approach of let's just make art. Let's you know. Let's go back to the beginnings of what hip hop is, which is, you know, kind of from the the person's life story and tell your life story instead of trying to like make it polished and make it all look great and wonderful. And I and I, I'm starting to get more of his style, I think, from that one than some of the other ones. I again I'm not like I'm still not a fan of, of the vocals, but I, I do think that he made his point better there and i got to see the lyrics like you say the lyric uh does help you know having the lyrics included i think reading them really helps to to make that point a little stronger mm-hmm. um i mean I'm yeah coming, i know it's, I'm it's coming too at bad this they... from, yeah i'm coming at this from already being not like hip-hop's not in my you know like you always say it's not in our wheelhouse and so no. so it, i'm i'm for, i'm find myself trying to force myself to like find stuff to, to like about it. Um, whereas that one I could be, it was easier for me to find things that I enjoyed. You know what I mean? I, there was things that I, in that, that I was like, yeah, I, I definitely see the perspective here. I don't, it's not lost on me. And, um, and in that particular instance, I could see through the, the, the voice. Yeah. No, well said. Uh, for someone who doesn't like this very much, you're sure saying a lot. No, <laughs> no, I'm just fucking it. No, you're. I, I, we're always walking that fine line as reactors that we never, especially when someone has uh, pledged an album for us to listen to, we never want to uh, crap over. But we are bringing our own lifelong experience of music. We're both 46 years old, right? We have a, we do have a wheelhouse of a mm-hmm. background that we've we're used to, and and but we we love that we're listening to things that are outside of our uh, comfort zone. Um, I. 
yeah, I, I'm with you about the vocals. Uh, we've established that. Uh, but it wasn't that bad on the song, really. I think it just depends on how he's doing it. Um, when he does a little bit more, that he does a little bit more angrier, or the, more that kind of yelling mm-hmm. on this. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Again, the lyrics does help, because I, I think that's what it is. I think it's just slam poetry slash lyrics with music. And mm-hmm. so when you can't quite read the lyrics, because he does have a, a thicker accent, and some of the lyrics are it's hard to hear if you're just listening. Mm-hmm. So reading along, it's like with subtitles, I, d- I think does help you experience the song a little bit better. And I like the last line here. It says, if your only goal is to be as good as Scroobius Pip, then as soon as you achieve that, your standards will slip. If your only goal is to improve on yourself, then the quest is never over, no matter how big your wealth. Hmm. So that, that I like that. The idea being that you know, don't try to be like somebody else, just be the best version of yourself. And that's a goal you'll never reach per se, because you're always just trying to be better each day. So that's good. It's a good positive message. Yeah, you just made a little rap there just now. Thank you. I'm just a natural down the sack. Okay, the last song for our part one <laughs> will be Angles, the title track from the al- album Angles. Okay, once again, no lyrics for me, but... Oh, I'm sorry. Nine inch nail sound there. takes out on me, ain't a bad man, he just gets drunk and feels alone, I tend to go for a walk and hope he's asleep when I get home, don't like to talk about it though, as I said it ain't his fault, it only happens when he's drunk as a last resort, wanted to get him a gift, to show my support, but I had no money and I stole it and I guess I got caught at times like that, I tend to switch off my mind, stare blankly into space and let what happens on mine, that seemed to anger this guard, he put his hands around my neck, said it's time for me to learn some manners and respect, it hurt. But I've had worse before, but it made me realise life was just a series of wars. I went straight home that day and locked the bathroom door, took a blade to both wrists, they won't hurt me no more.
I don't know how much of that you caught. Again, it's uh, I had the luxury of listen, read the lyrics, so it's about I caught a the lot story. Of yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so Mark went to college. His brother was, I guess, his brother was uh, beaten though, because uh, so Billy was the abuse victim, and he ended up committing suicide because of the guard that grabbed him on the neck. So. I, I, I think I'm following that story right. So there's three different, four different people in this story. A guard, a guy who went to college, a boy that got beaten. Yeah. And then anyway, so the so, yeah, so Mark gets home and he said, I, I was told today my brother's dead. Uh, there was a suicide note that he read. So he had anger and he grabbed a knife, you know, and stabbed that security guard. It, 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 for, so again, really cool story, but the idea again that there's things in life not quite what they seem. So everyone like it's it's very true, you know. We're all coming from different angles of life, and mm -hmm. you know what you see, somebody's journey. You know, someone's having a bad day. Yeah. Yeah. I'll use the example of celebrities. Like, oh, I met celebrity so and so at the airport, and he scowled at me. He's a jerk. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, well, okay, like maybe he just found out his mom died, or. Maybe he just has a headache, or you yeah, know, whatever. Or like maybe a thousand things, yeah, yeah, a thousand things. But all of a sudden, you've judged, you know, this situation or this person on one event. Can you imagine if your life was judged on one event? Like, well, which one do I pick? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I think the the subject matter was solid. Again, it was very. Oh, it was a story well told. Um, it would have made for really great slam poetry, mm. you know, thing. And, the, and, and that's, that's where I'm like, I'm, I'm torn here. Cause I'm mm. like throughout this whole album, really. Right. Like, even the song I didn't really like, I'm like the, when you kind of pu pulled it apart and explained it to me, I was like, Oh, but now I'm just really torn because I do really like the subject matter. And I like the, you know, the, um, the flow of what he says if he was just mm -hmm. saying it but for some reason the musical part just it always distracts me and it, it kind of feels like uh I, I just want to hear one i don't want to hear both <laughs> sure yeah, yeah no that's good uh yeah there you go that's part one yeah uh like my prediction was i wasn't gonna be bored i wasn't bored mm -hmm. some songs or some lyric writing was better than others like it's the story i like the story stuff those last two were really good mm -hmm. uh thank you so much peter for this request we'll get to part two probably in a week or two mm -hmm. and uh yeah thank you so much I'll let it digest and funny enough the last half of the album i think three of those songs were singles funny enough so it's just mm -hmm. weird that i think the first side had a couple singles last side has a few more but that maybe doesn't matter uh singles or not but i just find that interesting okay thank you so much thanks for watching and join us for part two of damn the sack versus scroobius pip the album's <laughs> angles <laughs>